Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to um, the course BC314, uh, which is uh, Media and Technology in Ministry. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, let's pray together and then we will get started. Could somebody please lead the class in prayer? Anyone could pray? Can I pray, Pastor? Please, go ahead, Asha. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for another class, God, that we're about to have, Lord. God, as we're about to learn about Christian arts, and Lord, that we may uh, continue to develop and sharing your good news through the Christian arts and media and technology, God, that we will prosper in every way and put you the first in everything that we do that we may not just glorify anything but glorify you god that you be the one you're the reason that we got to have these creative ideas and all this wonderful stuff because of you jesus thank you lord for this day as we're about to learn about you god that you fill us with more of um, your wisdom and understanding and as as you're about to teach lord thank you lord for everything in your name we pray amen Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. And uh, we paused yesterday uh, when we were talking about um, contemporary Christian music, contemporary uh, worship. So yesterday we, we talked about the gathering place, how that has changed. And we better give a quick overview of you know how worship has evolved starting from what we see in scripture through the New Testament church, the early church, and then through the last almost 2000 years, you know, how worship uh, has evolved. The turning point would be the 1960s, 1970s, when, um, when uh, Christian rock or you know, basically what we refer to today as contemporary Christian music was welcomed into the church. And the main, the way it happened, like we mentioned yesterday, was there was a pastor, Chuck Smith. Uh, he founded um, Calvary Chapel, which became a network of churches, many churches. But he was the one who welcomed these uh, these people who were coming out of the drug and uh, you know the rock music subculture in those days, uh, they were they were turning to Christ, and so uh, many of them were turning to Christ, and you know and that was called as the Jesus movement. These people were called Jesus freaks because they had a radical change in their lives, and they were you know choosing to follow Christ. Anyway, Pastor Chuck Smith was the one who welcomed them in, and uh, he was accepting of them playing Christian rock music, meaning, you know, till that time, people wouldn't play lead guitars and bass guitars and drums inside church or for Christian worship. And that wasn't accepted. But this became a turning point when he welcomed these people and because they were genuinely being saved, they were coming out of the rough background of drugs and that subculture, the hippie subculture, he welcomed them in. and. One man uh, from that, who came out from the, that background, Larry Norman, wrote a lot of songs, Christian songs, but to rock music. So that's called Christian rock. But basically, they began, they used all the instruments, you know, whatever they could, they used everything and worship God. And from there came, you know, contemporary Christian music and what we are seeing today, uh, worship has evolved. Now, what we want to do is take a little bit of time just to, discuss this right discuss this now uh, 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 i know we're talking mainly in the term in terms of english music uh, but i think this has also gone or what to say has uh, uh, filtered into even regional music christian music worship music so even for example in in our regional languages there is the use of nice exuberant music and instruments uh, in 
contemporary Christian worship, right? So it's it's kind of become pervasive and filled into different expressions. But let's you know let's just think about contemporary Christian music in terms of English worship, English worship, and let's discuss what what is the good and the bad. And what are some dangers we must avoid? So we just want to discuss that. I would love to hear your thoughts on contemporary Christian music. We're talking mainly about English music, you know, because I'm, I may not, we may not all understand each other's regional language music, but but the whole idea is, you know, the way music, worship music has gone and evolved to where, where it is today. What are the positives? What are the negatives? And what are some of the dangers the church must avoid? Let's take a few minutes to discuss that. I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, let's uh, engage. Anyone? Kong, go ahead. Uh, so for me, Pastor, I, I think um, like for worship day, like uh, um, when it comes to like music, uh, sometimes like um, people, they uh, start to uh, focus more on the worship leader than um, on the song itself. And uh, uh, I think like as a worship leader, we should be careful like uh, um, not to... Uh, have this uh, intention of becoming famous, popular, like um, how the other secular music world is. And it's like to glorify God. I think that's one thing. And like also um, about like, it's not like about competition or uh, thing like we're glorifying God. And uh, yeah, that's my point. Mm. That's an important point. Yes, yes. Good. Saying your thoughts? Yes, Pastor. Um, so on the positive side, I would say um, the way worship has evolved, it has um, been inclusive in such a way that um, there's something for every generation in expression, expressing their passion and worship for Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, if there wasn't something that could connect to the younger generation, then mm. A lot of that generation or my generation or you know all the times that the music worship has evolved would have been lost but every generation as it evolves it captures everyone you know to express how much they love god and their worship for him um on on the on the and another point again is as it evolves it also helps to catch others who are in the world you know um mm. music itself mm. is a tool but what you use the music to do is what makes it wrong music itself is just music but how mm. you use it what comes into the lyrics is what de who, what defines who you're worshiping so you know for people who have been in the world and they come into the faith now their lives are changed you know they can still use their music but now they're directing it over to god but the flip side to it is that you know there's something that uh there's something about hymns that we can never no matter how long we go or how much you know worship music has evolved there's something about hymns is that most of them were very very were word based they were all word based um to an extent i wouldn't say all it's like we're drifting away in terms of our worship songs being foundationally uh, on the word, based on the word, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's just a danger there whereby we might, our passion, our emotions are good to express, but where is the root of the songs? Where are they coming from? You know, are they, are mm -hmm. they word based? Are they faith based? Are they spirit filled? Mm -hmm. So that's a danger, you know, to how our worship or worship music has evolved. You know, that's a danger area that people may not be paying attention to mm. and i think yeah i think that, that those are my thoughts for now yes thank mm. you Pastor. very good good yeah that's that's good so you know if you put all these thoughts together uh you know kung said the worship 
the focus must not be on the worship leader. It's not a performance. It's not a competition. The the good side of contemporary music is, yeah, it, you know, it, it's 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 it engages people, the youth, and even people who come in from the world, you know, directing them to worship God. But like say he pointed out, one of the things we are noticing, noticing, is in the content of the songs, especially in contrast to the hymns, you know, and um, all of us uh, are recognized the hymns are so solid because uh, they are based, I'm not saying all the hymns, but the good hymns, the hymns that, you know, we, we, we've been singing, that have endured through time, those are really solid on the Word of God. And uh, some of the contemporary songs, you know, are lacking in that respect. So good, good points, everyone. Anybody else? Uh, what are the good? What are the you know? What are the good sides? What are the downsides? And what are the things you must avoid in contemporary Christian music and worship? Roshan, go ahead. Pastor, the first thing I feel in regards to contemporary music. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, some of the hymns are old hymns which are so rich in where uh, now they are bringing it out in a contemporary way. Mm. So that's a very good uh, thing because uh, in regards to becoming current, the church becoming current, we need to be open to you know, the present style of music, different styles of music. That's, uh, that's one of the positive sides, so to say. Mm. And uh, the negative side is that in the midst of all that, the, what is the emphasis and what is the focus on? Mm. Because sometimes what happens is we tend to move away from the real focus and it, the attention comes on the music, especially you know with the young people, uh, with the music and with all the other uh, the other things. When actually the focus has to be uh, the word of God and the voice of God and what God is saying to us, the focus has to be Jesus. So that has to be clearly emphasized. And that should that the focus we should never leave. Everything else, the music has to be in line with what the Word of God says and what God is saying. Mm. So, um, mm. One of the dangers that is what is we are seeing in the current time that we are moving away from uh, the Word of God and the focus is coming on music and all those things. So along with all those things, I think we have to emphasize on the principles of the Word, the lifestyle of a worship leader, and uh, what worship is all about. That's what I feel, Pastor. Thank mm. you. Mm. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. So you know, I, I think the, the 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 main theme that is coming out is yes, it is important to be contemporary in our worship expression in the music we use. That's very important because it does have the plus points. As but at the same time. There are certain things we have to be very careful about, you know, like uh, like if you've been pointing out, you know, it shouldn't become a performance. It shouldn't become about the worship leader. Uh, it shouldn't be just something about emotion, but the content, which is which has to be the word of God, that has to be central, you know. And uh, yeah, very good thoughts, and I agree with that. And you know, as as a as a pastor here, <laughs> turning through church uh, we've struggled with it we've struggled with it as well you know uh, we've had our own challenges and uh, i remember remember and i'm going back in time uh, of course you know uh, uh, almost uh, uh, i'm saying about 15 16 years something like that you know and we we from that time, you know, we were emphasizing with our worship team members, hey guys, this is not a show, this is not a performance. We want to be excellent, we want to be good, but it is still about the Lord. You know, and at that time, uh, we had some of, uh, some very, very skilled musicians who were, you know, part of our worship team. Uh, and and we should we should you know we are very clear on this and uh, I'm just sharing this experience because uh, I want to let you know we struggle through all of this and um, uh, but one of the things we emphasized with them was look your first commitment is to 
to being here, worshiping, listening to the word and so on, then you get, then only you can be on the stage leading worship because, you know, that was the way we didn't want pe people just to come and do it and go on. But then, you know, at that time, uh, there were people who used to come only on the Sundays. They used to come to church only on the Sundays that they had to play. And the other Sundays you won't find them in church. And as a pastor, that for me is like, that's not acceptable. You know, you need to be sitting and receiving God's word and you need to be growing together. We're journeying together. This is not, you're not coming here because we, we need you to do a performance, right? So, you know, I had to address it with the team repeatedly. I've said, hey guys, you know, repeat a bit. And then finally it reached a point where, now remember, the people who were there were, were, were you know, I, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, some of them were among India's best artists, you know, uh, in their skill level. They were among the best in the country and, you know, they were playing. And they were believers, they were believers, but this was the problem. They would only come on the Sunday, they were scheduled to play. So one, I remember once, and I called them all to the office, and this was after a lot of, you know, a lot of, lot of patience and sharing and explaining to them, you know, where you want to go as a worship team. I one day, I remember this meeting in my heart. I mean, I remember this meeting because that was the last meeting we had. I called them on the office, and, uh, and I talked to them. I said, see, you know, uh, I, I'm not a musician. Uh, I, you know, we respect your talent. We respect what God, you know, God has placed in you. But we require you, if you want to be on stage, you've got to be here every Sunday. You've got to, you know, you've got to be receiving. You've got to be growing. And this is a journey. We don't want people who come and perform, you know. And we had all of that conversation. And but you know, uh, that was uh, the last time because. Several of them left left the church at the after that meeting, um, but we had to take our stand, you know, as a church. Yes, uh, we respect musicians, we respect their talent, we respect everything, but this is sacred, right? This is not a performance. This is not us putting people on stage so that you know everybody feels good that you have great music. No. This is about worshiping God. And so, you know, we've made our journey through all of that. And then we, even today, you know, that's our focus. If we want to be exceptional in our music and the way we play, etc., but we are first of all here to worship God. Right? So that balances, and especially in the context of a local church, we have to find, we have to maintain, and we have to be very clear, uh, you know. Um, that about that we cannot let uh, just the excitement of having great musicians and wonderful instruments we can't let that supersede the fact that this is all about worshiping god so holding that together um, in the right way is very important okay so louis i see a comment music is transgenerational cuts across all age groups and I want to believe that Christian music is a framework that communicates the present theology of the body. If the holistic theology of the body is wanting, uh, it would find expression uh, in the blueprint of the Christian music. Yeah. So, and, and it is true, you know, that the, the mu music and the worship and the words that we use is actually communicating, like what Louis is pointing out, is actually communicating our beliefs. You know, it should communicate. Um, and some songs could go off, so you have to be careful. Make sure the songs are right and they're written well and they're based on the word and uh, they contain substance. Right? So these are things we have to be careful about uh, in, 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 in contemporary worship. So there is the good side to it, and we have to be watchful about the potential for problem and uh, uh, danger there. Christopher, you have something to say? You want to share something? Oh uh, yes, uh, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to add that uh, music, uh, or the gospel music, has also become very uh, commercialized, and uh, you know, as as a as a sort of a genre of music, uh, there is uh, a lot of money uh, 
uh, that musicians make and um, churches also make as in you know uh, specifically uh, worship churches mm. so i think it's um, there is a lot of commercial uh, commercial uh, commercialization uh, that mm. is in it and um, it can also you know sort of you know not really uh, yeah, sort of deviate from you know mm -hmm. some of the key uh, points that you know you were debased mm -hmm. you know around uh, the word of god and uh, you know growing in growing in um, as a christian etc yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point that's a good point the we should be careful that you know we don't get trapped in by the commercialization of the worship music that's a good point okay all right so now okay asha so if I suggest a question about the music world. So uh, being youngster, we have this, what is this? We hear kind of a, like people put out a rap music and all the pop, like beat of music. So some part of this, like the way they uh, had experienced that, see faster, because um, like, this generation, uh, we like music that's fast and less, um, more like, you know, updated stuff. And I have a, the question is like, when the people who are doing this rap music or presenting themselves on the stage, the way they do is like, they do it out of like, not the, um, connection type with the father in heaven but they do it like out of show and this kind of stuff and doesn't seem to be like doing our dance but... sorry doesn't seem to no that's just like uh see these rappers they do all this kind of uh, uh actions and yeah, so they dance and they entertain yeah. and try to like they don't reflect whom they're uh, actually for uh, for the youngsters to like they mm. don't show that they're doing for god but instead they're doing like out of a... mm. <laughs> yeah, so that's a fine line you know and that's a good point that you raised so there are certain kinds of music where you know we would say it's entertainment meaning it's not uh, it's uh, how do I say? Uh, it's it's geared towards the people, not so much as a worship towards God. Right now, there are songs that are what we would say ex an exhortative in nature. That means they are uh, songs that are meant for the people. They are uh, songs that bring exhortation, the motivation, inspiration. So they're not necessarily worship songs, but they are songs. Uh, of inspiration or motivation, like, you know those kinds of songs. So that's a different kind of song, and and those songs when you know when 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 different artists do them in their style of music, uh, the way everything is presented, of course, looks like an entertainment. It looks like more. This is geared for the crowd. It's not, you know, uh, an act of worship. It doesn't seem like that. But I think. Um, we have to look at it like this, that the person who's perf performing or who's doing or singing, uh, as long as his heart is, you know, y yes, he has to entertain because, you know, this is a form of entertainment. I'm, I'm not talking about the worship music. I'm talking about Christian music that's, you know, that's done to minister to the people. Uh, uh, it is a form of quote unquote entertainment. Which you're, you're ministering to the people but you're presenting it in a way that captures their attention and so on. Uh, and it has its place. I'm not saying we rule it out completely. It has its place. It has its benefits. And as long as the person doing it, you know, their heart is right before God, then we should look past the entertainment aspect. You know, I'm thinking about some great artists like, you know, Carmen, and this was, dated back in time. So these are very genuine people, right? Uh, they would pack stadiums and some of their songs were geared more as a motivation to the people of God. You know, they were they were singing songs that were 
mobilizing people, motivating, inspirational. And but the stage was really entertaining, meaning they were dancing, they had dancers, there would all kinds of things would be happening. But it's really impactful. It's impacting the, the people, mainly young people. Um, and was he was he quote unquote entertaining? Yeah. But was he a true believer? Yeah. Did he love God? Of course. Was he deep in his faith? Yeah. So, you know, but the event itself looks like a entertainment, but uh, it, it has its place. So my thought is uh, we need to discern those who are genuine and those who are just doing it for the sake of, you know, money or popularity and so on. And so, you know, there are good people who are involved in this kind of music, which is not necessarily worship music, but it's Christian music that is ministering to, to the people. And uh, it has its place. Uh, we need to recognize them, appreciate them, uh, and look at them as, you know, uh, look at their faith, look at the life they live, and I'm sure we will see good things. But we also have to discern those who are just doing it for the sake of, you know, they don't have a life that backs up what they're doing, so on. I hope I addressed what you were trying to highlight. Yes, yeah. Thank okay. you so much. All right, thank you. So we're going to move to uh, another topic, and I hope we have time to let's see. We, we should be able to cover it. Um, the next topic we want to talk about is creative arts, and of course, this is very, very broad. All right, so we're just using the word art for this huge wide field of creative expression uh, that can go, you know, and I've just listed some of the things that are common. It could be dance, it could be drama, mime, painting, writing, poetry, spoken word. Uh, it, you know, we could add to it sculpture, we could add to it even, you know, uh, so many things. It could be even in seeing the designs of uh, buildings. There is also digital art these days. You know, so it's not just traditional painting, but there is digital art. And so uh, it's just wide. It's a very wide field, a wide space. And I've just listed some. Now, before we get into actually talking about some of these, we must understand the journey the church has had to make. Uh, traditionally, and I'm going back, you know, to the 1600s, 1700s, the, the Renaissance, uh, there was a time when the church kind of stayed away or, you know, kept a distance from artistic expressions. Right. Now, in the Bible, no, we will look in the scripture a little later, but there was a time, and I'm talking about the, the history of the church, straight away, because, you know, how do you differentiate which art is really an expression towards God? And then, especially in the Renaissance, there was a lot of art that was very, very worldly, I mean, used in the world for whatever purpose. And so, you know, the church shied away from artistic expressions. Now, if you go back into the Bible, Old Testament, you find that dance was a part of worship. Dance was not, you know, like we said yesterday in Exodus 15, after they crossed the Red Sea, it says the people of Israel, they all danced and worshipped God, you know, with tambourines. Uh, so dance was a part of their expression of worship. Uh, in the prophetic, in the Old Testament, you find that there's the, there were certain prophets who acted out, who dramatized, who mimed um, their message. Ezekiel was one of them, who used a lot, a lot of you know. God said, "Do like this," you know, basically act it out, play it out, the message I want you to communicate. So we find that in Scripture, the Old Testament, but then. In the journey of the church, there was a time when this was not very welcome. I guess the church was trying to, you know, like, should we, should we not kind of thing. And then 
it, it, you know, as we progress, uh, uh, it was more like in the 1900s when dance and drama, of course, uh, there was the uh, artistic expressions of painting that slowly became, you know, accepted uh, as a form of, hey, this is a, you know, a legitimate form of expressing either your worship to God or communicating a message from God to the people, right? So, you know, the, the art became painting, especially art, and that form of it became accepted and slowly drama and dance and so on. And so today, I'm not saying everywhere, but in many places, creative expression is welcomed, is recognized as a way to speak to God and to speak for God to the people. So people recognize that, you know, I can worship God in dance or I can worship God through my artistic expression, whether it's painting or something else. And I can also communicate from God to people through these creative expressions. So, so the, the church is in a much better place today. And uh, whether it's dance, and uh, drama, and I'll just highlight a few things. You know, uh, in the 1900s, uh, the the uh, the founder of the Foursquare, uh, you can call it a denomination or church. Um, oh, I'm not getting her name now. Just um, just give me a moment, please. Let's look it up here on, online um, um, because I'm just getting her name. She started off in California, uh, Amy Semple McPherson. Okay. All right. I, was, I just Googled it. So, yeah, Amy Semple McPherson. Um, she did something very interesting, uh, which was very novel during her time. She actually included dramatization in her sermons. So Amy Semple McPherson was the founder of the Foursquare Church. And she set up this big cathedral in somewhere in California. And, uh, and this was back in you know, the 1960s, 70s. And she was a healing evangelist. So, her sermons were so the, what she did was while she was preaching she would have people playing out or dramatizing what she was preaching so the whole crusade or the healing service uh, became a very very powerful experience so they were not only hearing her preach, but there was music, there was, uh, you know, what we would call this drama happening, and it was a powerful experience. So, and she was very courageous to do that. You know, so in one sense, she was kind of pioneering something new, where traditionally it was like, okay, this preacher preaches the gospel and he prays for the sick and he gave an altar call. But she was doing something very unique uh, in, in, in the sense that she brought in drama and music and dramatization into as part of her message. And of course, she was a healing evangelist. So all of this would eventually lead into the proclamation of the gospel and healing and leading people to salvation. So it was very, very interesting uh, uh, what she did. And she kind of you know, highlighted the use of music and drama as part of the communication of the gospel. Another interesting thing, uh, and I'm just highlighting a couple of things. So many of you would, may have seen many of these dramas and skits and so on. But one of the things uh, that has, in terms of drama, uh, uh, and this, is, you know, this has lasted over four, four decades, so it's interesting. Was this drama, uh, it came out of, uh, you know, um, a, 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 a community, a group, group of believers in Ontario, Canada, 
they produced a drama uh, called Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. So it's a very direct message. Yeah, nothing, no mincing words, nothing. Um, and the tagline is, where will you be when reality strikes, right? And basically they created this drama and they did it in such a way that any church, which had about 30, 40 people, could actually reproduce this drama for their community. That was a very nice thing they did. But I'm highlighting this because this one drama, okay, one drama, has spanned for more than 40 years. It has been redone by churches and communities in over 400 countries. They've, they've, they've redone this. And literally millions have come to faith in Christ through this drama. So I'm just highlighting it because this is something amazing. Right? And, and, and in some places, it's almost like revival broke out, meaning thousands of people started coming to Christ as this drama was re you know, in, in their community. They played it over several days. Crowds started coming, crowds started coming because people are being affected by this drama. Now you can go and watch it online. I've just given you the YouTube link here as well. And this is by one particular church. And there, there are many, many, you know, uh, 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 churches that have done this. Um, so the fact is, this has been, you know, using drama as a means of communicating the message has become very, uh, not has become, is very powerful. Right? So you can we can call it skits or plays or drama, you know, whatever language you use. It's we understand it. Um, it has been very very powerful, and so you know we need to look at that and of course uh, look at ways by which writing plays and skits and dramas that actually communicate the message. And and this there's a there's a website worshiplibrary.com I'd encourage you to go if you're interested in reading things they, they put uh, it's a little theological but it's it's quite interesting in the way they capture information on various creative arts and worship forms it's interesting so similar to drama is the mime where in mime there is no voice but it's just people doing actions but the actions are communicating a message right so uh, that's again another form expression. And like this, there's painting, writing, poetry, spoken word, and so on. So many different creative expressions, uh, which in today's world are very powerful because they communicate to different segments of society. People are really interested in those expressions. This becomes a medium through which we can communicate to them. It's like we are speaking their language and we're able to touch their lives. Okay. Now, so, you know, we understand the high impact of creative arts, whether it's in communication, even in teaching believers, or even in the worship of God. So this this we are recognizing it, we understand it. You know, it has it serves several purposes. We can use it to communicate to the world, we can use it to teach the people of God, we can use it as an expression of our worship to God. However, life in the creative art space is not easy. It's not easy. And I just want us to think about this. You know, and we'll take maybe the next 10 minutes to have a little discussion. What are the challenges? Believers. Now, see, the, the, you know, as a church, yeah, we could do a little drama, we could do a little skit or play, and you know, that that's 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 fine. But if we want, if we were going to do this in a very powerful way, we need you know what is what we would call as professionals, meaning people who are who are really um, who are highly skilled in these things, right? They're not amateurs. I mean, they 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 are like pros in these areas. Um, believers who are really engaging in one or more creative expressions in order for us to be very impactful, uh, either towards the world or on the church or even in our worship to God. 
But like we said, it's not easy. So I want us to just think about and discuss what are some of the challenges that believers who want to really engage in this space of creative arts, uh, what are what do you, what would be some of the challenges they face, and how can we help them? How can we encourage them uh, to engage? Because we aren't recognize the value of creative arts. We recognize believers must engage very meaningfully, and you know must be excellent. But then, it's not easy. How? What are their challenges? How do we help them? Okay, so please feel free to share your thoughts and uh, I see Kung's Kung Bilu's note here is your research topic. It's <laughs> good. Go ahead, Louis, please share your thoughts. Good morning, sir. Um, I think one of the challenges I find is that we get into um, certain professional fields very late. Um, by that, I mean that if a certain um, trend comes on board, most times Christians get in there very late and we don't go in there very big. We go in there as end users and not as um, places of dominion. If, if that's the right word to use. Um, case in point now, um, there's, a, there's the AI is coming on board. And I noticed that most times church or the church um, aspect of, of the mountains gets into those things very, very late, very late. And by that time, the world has already started using it and maximizing it. And then there's always a tendency to bring corruption into it. And it is when there's that, that intense intensity of corruption, then we want to go in there and begin to harness it and begin to want to start changing it, which many times we don't have the skill set for. Mm. And and, and that by that time, the people that have the skill set are now the ones on, on the outside, which we have to start learning and relearning. So sometimes we have to be very, very proactive and, and watch out for trends and be open for new opportunities to uh, maximize the gospel. So mm -hmm. it, it it can be in any field, any field. It can be. Uh, there was a time in Nigeria where certain churches were like TV was not part of the gospel. But now, after almost thirty years, they're now saying they want to accept TV, and television has gone. That's that's three generations already. Mm -hmm. So you have lost about three generations because you feel that certain trends or certain technological and uh, innovations were not were not scriptural, were not biblical. But they don't mm. have to be technically biblical. They just have to be opportunities to to springboard um, the gospel mm. Mm. into a different different uh, aspects. So let me just leave it at that. Sir. But I just think that we get into this field very very late, and by the time we get in there, we don't have the skill set, we don't have the the manpower. They will begin to compromise mm. to mm. achieve what we want to achieve. I just, I just feel so so. Thank you so. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I recognize that. I recognize what you're saying. That um, you know, uh, see, and, and especially if you want to be, if you want to have impact in this space, creative arts, of, and we'll be talking next week about films and television, radio, and so on. You know, if we want to be impactful, uh, we have to be excellent. You know, uh, and the sad thing is. Um, Somehow, when the church does things, and I'm not saying this is all the time, but generally, when the church does things, it's not it's not that that ex we don't see that excellence. We don't see something that's so impactful coming through. And hopefully, that's going to change, and that is changing. But we, uh, you know, like you're saying, we need to understand that. Look, in this space, we we need to go in early. We need to really be excellent not give second third fourth uh, you know levels of things but be there like you say on the cutting edge doing really good work yeah i recognize what you're saying and 
And sometimes, you know, that's why people sometimes don't even come and listen. You know, you say the church is doing a play, uh, the church is putting up some creative experience. Oh, you know, we know that's not going to be, you know, out there on the cutting edge. It's so then it's so difficult to welcome somebody from the world and say, hey, come and see or come and hear. Yeah. But if we can do an excellent work, they will come. Yeah. yeah. So let's think about anything else that, you know, if anybody has experience or maybe you observe people in this space. Go ahead, Asha. Pastor, what is this? Um, Auntie Miriam from the ABC history. She was uh, doing mosaic, right? So, like, does she, I have a question. Does she like uh, um, establish for? Uh, I don't know how to explain, but the way she does like the mosaic thing. So, it speaks through the lives of many, through like whoever it may be, like anyone who's performing this Christian arts. And I think since now phone is so available every time because I've observed people like it's handy dandy and they can like people can uh, start instead of putting like instead of us. Usually people can watch most like Instagram and all the stuff to like give them uh, this thing. So, so in Christian ways we can start like to makeup like not makeup to dramatize the how like to explain the gospel in uh, such a way of acting or anything that is to show the gospel and plus to bring the like i've seen like people get inspired when they watch like either to a dance or anything they're they either stop crying or they took painting, they're healed or restored like that. So I'm just you know, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so it, it has been going on. Uh, I mean, like we said, and uh, the example we gave uh, this this particular drama or skit or Heaven's Bell, uh, Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. Like, you know, it's been more than forty years. So. Or uh, the answer is yes. The church has been doing it, and uh, and uh, you know, and the church has been s slowly coming into other spaces, like even in the di digital media. We will talk about that in 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 the future class. Uh, you know, using social media to bring out these skits or plays or so on and so forth or short films uh, uh, movies so on so the church has been moving there um, I think and so that's a good thing that's a good thing and we thank God for it and we should continue engaging uh, in all of these expressions but I think what we should do is we should be excellent you know we need to do it very well so that we can impact people and you know to answer your question yes we or to you know to to coincide with your thoughts. Yes, the church has been doing it. Church continues to do it, and we need to continue to uh, do what we can in these areas. Yeah, and they are impactful. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah. All right. So um, now, just so in this space, you know, was, what one is uh, uh, the challenges, you know, is. Traditionally, people who are uh, engaged in this creative arts, creative expressions, um, first of all, they are not being either recognized or encouraged. You know, so we need to do that. Now, Asha was mentioning about a young lady who today is having uh, her own ministry, but. Uh, when we go back in time, and I go, I don't know which year this was, maybe 2008 or nine, was the time we, you know, we we engaged, we said, you know, hey, Miriam, come get started. So she she was doing a lot of things in church. So we encouraged her to, you know, in church, and we start. You can see some of those videos out there on our YouTube channel. 
uh, you know, former performing arts team, and we said, you know, you do this in church. So we kind of gave a little platform for her uh, to get started. And uh, we, and this was back, I, I forget which year, but I think it was around 2008 or something. So we used to do, we encourage you know, young people and uh, 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 do performing. Uh, we used to do skits and dramas. Uh, we did several productions. Uh, and some of these are on our YouTube channel. Every year we came out of different productions. Um, and then today, you know, she's out there. Has, she has her own ministry. She's doing well in the same space, creative art space. But the church kind of helped her and helped and and you know kind of brought this out. But we need to do more of that. That is help more people do this. I remember just before the pandemic. So this was back in 2020, 2018, 2019, I forget which year it was. We we held a creative arts conference. Uh, before the pandemic, where we our goal was to really encourage people in the church. So we brought in speakers. We had three different tracks. One was in the area of drama and film and uh, other areas. And we, you know, there were more than 70 people from the church who came together that day for that weekend, actually, you know, try to mobilize them. Hey, you know, get on, you know, uh, creative arts is a way that you can serve God and so so this was done of course before the pandemic and um, so the, the first thing is that the church must recognize the church much must encourage and we want to do more and more of that right and and then the church must make it financially viable for these people because how are they going to survive how are they going to be able to you know, make a living if they're going to be engaged in this full time. So we need to think about that as well. Make it financially viable for them. And then I think the third aspect is for us to be on the cutting edge. It means to be very excellent. We need to push for excellence in all of these creative areas. So we're going to talk more about this next week uh, on other topics like film and, and so on. We'll get into the other things, social media and so on uh, in the coming days. Okay. I'll just quickly read the comments, then we close in. We'll pray and close. Roshan says, um, uh, even in movies, we need to be careful what are we showing the people. Some English Christian movies so today are moving away from what the Bible says. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna have we're gonna talk about movies. We will we have we'll have a lesson on that, Roshan, and we'll get into those thoughts. Good. Come below says sometimes could it be that the people are not just not so open because of traditions that were handed down to them? Yeah. So one of the reasons the church is a little apprehensive is, you know, because they're not used to seeing this or they don't have the understanding that uh, creative arts can be a medium of expression either to God or from God to people. So people need to be educated, informed, so that they can slowly become more and more open to it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. I hope these uh, discussions are useful. Uh, let's close in prayer. We will continue the, um, uh, on some new topics uh, next week. Could somebody close in prayer, please, and then we'll dismiss. Uh, Father, we are most grateful and thankful unto you for this eye-opening discussions that we have been having over the period. We pray that, Lord, you grant us individual churches the grace to be able to do what is needful and what is right in our time so that we can impact our generation we pray commit ourselves into your hands O oh god as we are stepping out into this day may this day bring us great success may we be fruitful in all our endeavors in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you everyone thanks for being on the class today and uh, we'll connect again next week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.